That's okay. I was once in seeing something in Yorktown, and I had a runny nose, and I sniffed right in the middle of the room. I mean, it went through. I'm gonna sniff her around the world. Let's get her hot. I'd like to call the March Cosin School Board meeting to order, please. Uh, Sophie? Drew Parr will, pro will provide the inspirational reading and lead us in the pledge. Drew is a seventh grader at the Cosin Middle School. He is active in the SCARE Club, which stands for Students Concerned About Restoring the Environment. He plays baseball and basketball and enjoys practicing both sports. His goals are to get good grades and become a member of the National Honor Society. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is a quote from General George S. Patton. I don't measure a man's success by how high he climbs, but how high he bounces when he hits bottom. Thank you, Drew. You did a nice job doing double duty tonight. Uh, next up, student presentations. And our presentation tonight is from Ms. Thompson's 6th, 7th, and 8th grade art classes. Uh, from 6th grade, we have Zoe Carujo and Angelina Connor. From 7th grade, we have Lindsey Cunningham and Drew Parr. From 8th grade, Noah Wiggins and Leah Spradlin. Hello, I'm Mrs. Thompson, and these are our students, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. The first project that's going to be displayed is in a 6th grade project. It's about abstract expressionism. The objectives to the project were that students learn to understand the concepts of abstract expressionism and then to make an abstract expressionist painting and be able to identify what that actually looks like. Zoe? And then Angelita, would you read this one? And then Zoe, would you like to share about your artwork and hold it up so folks can see? Okay. I enjoy learning that painting in the abstract expressionism style is very fun. I learned that you can paint what you want and allow the painting to speak for itself. I thought the green looked like trees, so it was perfect for that and that. I enjoy learning that painting All right, Drew, come on over. The next project is with, um, or sorry, Lindsay, come on over. The next project is with seventh, uh, with a seventh grader, Lindsay Cunningham, but it was an eighth grade class. It was about sculpture. They understood how to 
know the difference to design 2D and 3D, and also um, the work of Sebastian Eruzes. Hold it up good so folks can see. Good job. The next project is with a seventh grader, Drew Parr. Uh, the objectives were that they learn realistic design techniques, how to draw realistically, and to use color theory. Everything you see there was only mixed from the primary colors in black and white. In drawing, the term foreshadowing refers to showing depth in a flat surface. Foreshadowing was first studied during the 15th century by painters of Florence. The feet here appear closer by placement and size. This type of artwork shows what I like to wear, and I was successful with foreshadowing because the feet really do appear to be closer than anything else in the picture. Good job. Foreshortening. <laughs> The next one is with Noah Wiggins. This was an art history, eighth grade. This was an art history lesson, and they were learning about the native peoples. Students had to learn symbolism and rock engraving symbols, and they had to pick or create in the style of the native peoples of their choice, so they had to do some research to find out who they were interested in. They could build, paint, collage, or draw. Very good. And another eighth grader, um, our last student presenting is Leah Spradlin, and this project was also eight history or art history exploration. The students uh, learned to research skills, uh, learned research skills by being able to research an artist. They had to pick which artist interested them, and once they did, then they had to interpret that famous painting in the style and uh, similar to what the artist did by making either a change in scale, change the media, the material add something or combine more than one famous piece that they researched. Artists would create famous works of art to help them find their own artistic style. For example, the thick brush strokes of Vincent Van Gogh may inspire a modern masterpiece, while Giorgio O'Keeffe's large-scale flowers may inspire an outdoor sculpture for botanical garden. I chose the work of Paul Cézanne because I liked the simplicity of the image, and I thought I was going to do a combination of this painting in the second one. But when I tried to use the brush strokes of the second painting, I was not happy with the results. So I ended up deciding to change the media. I changed the policy and into a vinagre and chalk pastel board, and I am happy with these results. And if you want to see all the wonderful artwork that the students did, please come on <coughs> April 1st um, at 5.30 for the art show, drama production, and musical vignettes. That will be at Pocosa Middle School. Thank you very much, students, and thank you, Ms. Thompson, for your work. Next up, uh, our recognitions, and I'm going to ask that everyone remain until uh, the intermission that's going to happen immediately after our recognitions. Our first recognition was actually supposed to be um, Coach Bennett. Um, 
but he may show up a little bit later or we'll recognize him at another meeting, but he has um, his opening game this evening. So uh, I suspect they're still playing on the field and hopefully having a great game. So with that said, we're going to move on to the um, PHS National Merit Scholarship finalists. The National Merit Scholarship Program has now determined which of the 16,000 semifinalists named in September of 2014 have met all requirements to advance to the finalists standing in the competition. All finalists will be considered for National Merit Scholarships to be offered next year. Percocin High School has two finalists. If first, Molly Giffen would come forward, please. Molly is a senior at Pocosin High School. She's participated in drama, chorus, academic challenge, and special friends throughout her high school career. Molly has applied to UVA, William & Mary, JMU, University of Oklahoma, and the University of Alabama, where she will study law. Please join me in congratulating, congratulating Molly on being a National Merit Finalist. And next, if Shalini Kumar would come forward, please. Shalini is involved in many act activities at our high school, including varsity tennis and academic challenge teams, Leo Club, and is vice president of Model United Nations. She is in National Honor Society, Science Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, and is president of Mu Alpha Theta. Shawnee plans to major in bioengineering or biomedical engineering, then earn her MD or PhD degree to become a medical researcher. She has applied to several colleges, including Stanford, MIT, Harvard, and Princeton. Please join me in congratulating her on being a National Merit Finalist. Now we'll switch gears a little bit and we're going to do some recognitions of our wrestlers who did very well in the recent state tournament. Tonight we're going to recognize some of the wrestlers for, that, for those accomplishments. First we will recognize individual accomplishments. As I call your name, please come forward and remain up front until we finish the team recognition. First, Ethan Bryce. Ethan is a senior at Pocosin High School, and this was his first year wrestling. He won second place in the 195-pound category. He finished the year with a record of 34 wins and eight losses. After high school, Ethan wants to major in engineering. Please join me in congratulating him on his accomplishments. <laughs> Next, Ross Graham. Ross is a junior who won first place at the state competition in the 170 pound category. He came in first place last year and third place as a freshman. Ross had a perfect season this year with a record of 50 wins and no losses. He has a high school career record of 135 wins and seven losses. Please join me in congratulating Ross on his accomplishments. <laughs> We would also be recognizing Robert Hennessy, but I believe he's at a lacrosse game this evening. But now I'd like to ask Patrick McCormick to come forward, please. <laughs> Patrick is a freshman. He won first place in the Virginia 3A state championship in the 106-pound class. He has a record of 45 wins and only one loss, and he hopes to attend the University of Virginia in the future. Please join me in congratulating Patrick on his accomplishment. I now ask Alec Bleeker, is he here this evening? <coughs> Chase Lynch. And I'm not sure if Kyle could make it tonight. Poltney? Okay. I'd also ask that their coaches, I know that our um, coach Eric Decker may not have been able to make it here tonight, but if our assistant coaches are here, BJ Compton, Kendall Ridenauer, Glenn Parks, and I know Mike McCormick's here. The varsity wrestling team had an outstanding 2014-2015 season with a winning record of 19-5, and five, finishing in first place at the Colin E. Baker and the Charger Duels. They went 3-2 and two at the Virginia Duels and third place in the Big Blue Tournament. 
They qualified seven wrestlers for the Virginia State Tournament and finished with three state finalists. These young men and their coaches won third place in the state at the tournament. Please join me in congratulating all of our students and our coaches for their success at the state level this year. I must say, having attended several of your matches, always very exciting to watch Bacosan wrestling. So, congratulations. We're going to move from wrestling to music. At this time, we'd like to recognize a student who made all Virginia band. Would Abigail Scott please come forward? Abigail is a senior at Pocosin High School and was selected to play in the All Virginia Band. She has been in the band program for seven years but switched to French horn her junior year. She also plays clarinet and cello and participates in the Williamsburg Youth Orchestra. She re received a scholarship with the Williamsburg Consort Society this past September. Abby plans to attend either Shenandoah University or Radford University to major in music therapy to eventually teach autistic children to play music in school divisions. <laughs> Please, a little music. That was perfect. Please join me in congratulating Abigail on her accomplishments. Next, I'd like to move to some recognitions for achievements in DECA. We'd like to congratulate our DECA competitors for an outstanding performance in the Virginia DECA State Leadership Conference. The event hosted over 2,000 competitors from across the state of Virginia. 29 Procosan students attended the event competing in 19 different categories. Procosan received 22 winning medals for their exceptional performance. Students compete in the areas of marketing, business, finance, and hospitality and tourism. Two Procosan High School students will advance the DECA Nationals. First, if Chase Lynch would come forward again, please. <laughs> Chase is a senior at our high school. His category was human resource management. He was also district champion as well as state finalist and international career development conference qualifier. Chase is on the varsity wrestling team, as we know, and upon graduation, he would like to major in aerospace engineering at Virginia Tech or West Virginia University. Please join me in congratulating Chase. George Ziegler. George is also a senior at Pocosin High School. He's been a DECA member for four years. He has won awards for the written test and the business role play. He will complete in the food, compete in the food marketing category. George is the current PHS DECA president, senior class secretary, and a member of LEO Club. He is currently an intern at Abbott Real Realty for the ex experiential learning class. George will com compete at the DECA Internationals in April and plans to attend Hampton, Sydney in the fall. Please join me in congratulating George on his accomplishment. And I believe I saw Mr. Nieves. I don't know if our other teachers are here, but congratulations to them and thanks for supporting our students. And for those of you that don't know, this competition was in the middle of one of our many winter events, so we were just thrilled we could get our students there. <laughs> Again, um, one more set of recognitions, and this is for all Virginia Chorus. So if Cole Mercado would come forward, please. Cole is a junior at Pocosin High School. This was his first year making all district chorus, as well as his first year of eligibility for all Virginia Chorus. Cole is an avid participant in the performing arts and plans on attending a four-year university to major in musical theater. Please join me in congratulating Cole on his accomplishment of being in the All Virginia Chorus. <laughs> McMullen, if you'd come forward, please. Sam is also a junior at Pocosin High School. This is his first year making all Virginia chorus and his first year of eligibility. He is currently dance captain in Pocosin High School's show choir, Sound Station. He is a member of the Symphonic Band and is section leader in marching band. 
He has also been involved in community theater and in Percocin High School's drama company. Sam is currently an AP student and plans on attending a music conservatory for college. Please join me in congratulating Sam for making all Virginia for it. And with that, we'll take a short break. We'll move into presentations and reports and 
First up is Mr. Bowen with the financial update. Good evening, Dr. Carter, school board members, and Dr. Parrish. Uh, I'm pleased to report <clears throat> since our last meeting, the General Assembly has approved the budget for 2016. Uh, however, I'm going to defer any discussion about the budget in my report this evening. Dr. Parrish will be presenting uh, her, her proposed budget for 2016 in the work session immediately following this meeting. Uh, for my report this evening, I wanted to update the board on a few items that we've talked, uh, talked about the past few months. First, staff has been working with a company on a compensation and classification study. Uh, we are anticipating this work will be completing in the coming, completed in the coming weeks, and our goal is to have a report to the board by late spring. At our December meeting, the board approved the 2015-2019 uh, capital improvement plan. Dr. Parrish presented that plan last evening to uh, the City Planning Commission. The Planning Commission approved it, and it's now been forwarded to uh, City Council for their review and consideration. And finally, in January, I updated the board on a number of operational and administrative efficiencies that PCPS has deployed <clears throat> over the past several years. And one item in particular, uh, I mentioned that staff is currently testing a, an automated time clock management system. This is something that will aid in our compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act. Staff has completed its testing and will begin working with the school board based clerical positions, those, those folks, um, as in April as part of our next phase of our planned rollout. Uh, we expect that um, all of our non exempt employees, which number about 70, will be using this new system beginning in August. This concludes my report this evening. Questions? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, next is Mr. Pappas with the operations update. Good evening, Chairman Carter, School Board, Dr. Parrish. In the area of safety, uh, PCPS participated in a region-wide safety program with the area's power plant accident response plan. And this exercise was observed by FEMA, and our report back from them was that we did a stellar job. Also, today is Tornado Day, and all of our schools have completed their tornado drill. In the area of transportation and maintenance, <clears throat> schools were either closed or delayed for nine days last month, and despite the uncooperative weather, there was plenty of snow-related activity <coughs> happening throughout the division. Custodial and maintenance workers worked tirelessly to shovel and salt primary and secondary sidewalks in anticipation of school opening, and Mother Nature never cooperated. <coughs> the executive director of operations and the superintendent spent many a pre-dawn morning and late afternoon driving bus routes throughout the city. As the snow and cold lingered, the side streets, and more specifically those roads that we have to do three-point turns to get buses turned around in the correct direction, continued to be a source of concern. You can imagine that these areas are of concern to transportation as they serve for both a bus stop which children oftentimes are running too late, and an area that a bus has to perform a three-point turn, which includes backing up. The snowplow, which PCPS bought surplus several years ago, was pressed into continuous service. The city garage helped us right in between snowstorms to get it operational just in time for the ensuing storm. And having that plow saved us a considerable amount of money in our contracted snow removal um, expenses. Public Works worked very closely with the division as it relayed to us where they stood in their efforts to battle the storm, the several storms as it were. And then during the coldest days, despite our efforts of going into the schools and checking on the schools, the day that schools thawed out, we had a pipe break. And that happened in the elementary school, but through the quick actions of the school administration, the school staff at elementary school, the custodians, <coughs> the maintenance men, and the kitchen staff, we were able to minimize and, dare I say, prevent any um, 
intrusion into student learning. And that concludes my report. Questions, comments there? I have one. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. When schools are delayed, do we still have the breakfast program for kids? No. Do we have any plan in place for some of these kids who this might be their first meal since lunch the prior day? Um, no, we do not currently. It's something we could look at. I would really appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Anybody? Thank you, sir. And uh, next up, Dr. Colley with the instructional update. I apologize, I was taking notes on what you said. Good evening, Dr. Carter, members of the board, Dr. Parrish. The calendar is telling me that spring starts this Friday, <laughs> despite the weather forecast, and we're all grateful that spring is coming, and with that, summer school can't be far behind. So my update this evening is on our summer instructional programs that we're gearing up for. Um, as, as you know, school divisions may offer summer programs, and in Picosan, we offer the following programs. At the K-8 level, we offer remediation and support courses. Um, we keep our K-5 classes at the primary school offering math and reading remediation and support for those students. And at the high school, we offer sixth through eighth grade, our middle school remediation for both math and reading. Our remedial program is state funded. At the high school level, we offer high school credit on a tuition basis and we offer ninth grade PE and health. 10th grade PE health and driver's education for our students who um, are turning 16 the year following that class. We offer algebra, geometry, economics, <coughs> and personal finance. And as I mentioned, we do charge tuition for those courses. We don't charge tuition for the remediation and support courses because they are underwritten by the state through remediation funding. Um, tuition at the high school is based on the cost to our school division to provide instructional staff, support staff, instructional materials, and transportations. Last year, our tuition was $425 a course, and our recommendation for this year is $450 a course. We're also recommending that we change our non-resident tuition for summer school this year. It's, it's been $425 the same, and we're um, proposing that we increase that to $500, and that's comparable to other Peninsula divisions, and um, you have a reading file on that for a little later um, in the meeting. The last instructional summer program we offer through our schools um, is our extended school year, or ESY program, and that's for certain spe special education students only. This is based strictly on their needs, their disability, and their IEP, and there are no fees for that either. So summer will be here before we know it. We're ready to register students for our summer programs. And before we get that going, I'd like to make sure I took time out this evening to thank you for your continued support of our instructional programs. And that concludes my report, and I'm happy to take any questions you might have about our summer programs. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Is there any limit to the number of classes that a child can take in summer school? Do yes. they get the 990 hours or whatever it is? 140 clock hours in summer school? Do they, I guess it's two questions. It, are children or teenagers eligible for more than one class? They take one class. Just one class. One class. And they do get the 140 hours. And they do hours. get the clock hours. The high school, and I apologize, I do not have it right here in front of me, the high school goes a little longer, um, both time-wise and in July, than our younger students do go. So they do get, they get the clock hours, yes. We're required to do that. Uh, how many did we have participate in summer school programs last year? We have an estimated figure? I do not. I, you know, I didn't copy it down um, today. I think I, ha I have that and can get that to you. I think we had that in the fall. Anybody else? Uh, does the state adequately fund those remediation programs? I know you say they fund the programs, but they also fund education. 
They do. They, they for for our well, that's where it pays to be small. We're able to have very customized summer programs, and yes, it does cover that. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, Mr. Melton, could you run us through our consent agenda, please? Okay, for tonight we have the approval of minutes of public forum on budget that was held on January 29th and closed. The approval of financial reports and closed. Approval of personnel actions and closed. <coughs> and the authorization, authorization to change appropriation in accordance with the attached request also and closed. Thank you, sir. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. And the second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Rimes, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. And other matters for consideration A, approval of minutes of the January regular meeting and work session, which was enclosed. Do I have a motion to approve the meetings from the January regular session? So moved. Second. And Ms. Rimes, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Abstain. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Abstain. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. That is, uh, motion passes four to abstentions. Thank you. And consideration of approval of summer school fees. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped one. I'm on B. And that would be the proclamation declaring uh, this week public school volunteer week. Um, parents and community involvement is definitely a significant factor in our schools, especially in this community. Uh, by becoming a volunteer, parents and community members are providing an invaluable contribution to the education of our students. During the school year, numerous volunteers are spending many hours serving the Coastal City Public Schools as chaperones, mentors, after-school tutors, club leaders, booster club members, PTO, PTA members, guest speakers, classroom helpers, and the list goes on and on. And uh, I can say firsthand that uh, back to school night for some of the younger grades, the, everybody has flocked around the tables signing up to help to volunteer in the classrooms throughout the year. And uh, we just have a tremendous amount of community support from uh, parents and those who no longer have students in our school system. So we really appreciate all the work that the volunteers do to uh, help educate our children. Uh, do I have a motion to approve uh, the national, I mean, the uh, proclamation for school volunteer week. So moved. And a second. Second. Any uh, questions, discussion there, comments? I agree. We have a lot of dedicated parents and uh, community members who serve well. Yes, we do. Uh, Ms. Rimes, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Now we'll move to item C consideration of approval of the summer school fees. Dr. Parrish. Yes, as Dr. Colley outlined, we are bringing forward a recommendation to you to increase our summer school fees at the high school level from 425 a course to 450. Um, <coughs> that will help to uh, actually cover the full cost of the program for us. Um, and we have also um, added a non resident cost, which is typical of, as you can see, some other school divisions in our locality. We don't have many of these students. It's there, though, in case we do, because we sometimes of our students go to other school divisions for summer school for courses we aren't able to offer um, in part due to our size. You have a chart on your reading file that shows what the um, summer school costs were for other school divisions in the summer of um, 2014 so we there may be increases in the other school divisions we're not aware of but we're certainly in line with what's charged in other school divisions so with all that said I recommend approval of the increase in the summer school fees. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve summer school fees? So and a second? Second. Uh, any questions there? Comments? It's a good move. Uh, Ms. Rimers, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. 
Chairman Carter. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Next, consideration of approval of adjustments to the 2014-2015 calendar. Can't <clears> imagine <throat> why. Dr. Parrish? Yes, as Mr. Pappas said, we had nine days in which we had delays or students out of school, seven of them being students out of school. We did have two inclement <coughs> weather days built into the calendar, which was <coughs> helpful. And we also um, had uh, what we call bank hours or time that's built into the school calendar to um, get us to the 990 hours. But with the days that we missed, we do need to um, make some changes to the calendar. So as you're aware, we're recommending that June 12th become the last day of school this year, and that will become an early dismissal day, with the other early dismissal days being each moved up a day at the end of the year. March 27th, we're recommending become a full day of instruction instead of early dismissal, so that adds to the hours that we're required to have um, to meet the state requirements um, that ensure that we get the funding that we get from the state. And then additionally, um, we are recommending that we add 15 minutes to the day for the primary school, the elementary school, and the middle school um, because we need to ensure that they reach the 990 hour requirement and there are some things in the school days that cannot be counted at those grade levels. Um, so that's why theirs is a little different situation from the high school who does meet the 990 instructional hours and the 140 clock hours with the recommended changes. So um, we have uh, put this tentatively up on the um, website. Uh, based on your approval this evening, we will send um, automated phone calls home to all the parents at the primary, elementary, and middle schools tomorrow evening to make sure they understand about the change <coughs> in the minutes that will actually start next Monday and go through May 22nd. And we are keeping all of this very visible on the website as well because we want to ensure the community is informed about, especially that the end date times um, going a little bit longer for the three school levels. So. With that, I recommend approval of the adjustments to the calendar, and I must say, in hopes of not having as hard a winter next year. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the adjustments to the 2014-15 calendar? So moved. And a second? Second. Any questions, comments there? Uh, yes. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to thank the superintendent for some creative thinking. Uh, I think every school system in our local areas have to do something, and I appreciate the hard work you've done to to make these recommendations to us. Well, I agree with that. I also hope that in the future we might be able to adjust something that we're doing now so that it doesn't always hit us at the end of the year. I, I know it was an awful long time ago, but I, I think when we are talking instructional days and we're doing it the day before school ends, but that's not really an instructional day. That's keeping with the state requirement that we have X number of minutes. Um, and I would hope that we could find a way to have a makeup day during the time the kids still see it at school. You know, um, I know they're there, but. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in the next item when we talk about calendar. You know, the, the, the way to get those days in before the end of school would have been spring break or Memorial Day, which would have been up front. But we certainly heard, I know I did, I suspect you all did from the community, that, um, that we not use spring break or Memorial Day. Spring break, many families had made plans already, and Memorial Day certainly has a significance for our area with our heavy military. But when we get to the next item, I'll talk about some things that we'll need to do. Unfortunately, we are held to state requirements. I've had some conversation with people up at VDOE at the fact that we have to do things like this just to meet the requirement that don't make other sense. But yeah. until those requirements changed, we're boxed in, but maybe one day they'll change a little bit and give us some more flexibility, which would be nice. So redefine instruction. Yeah. I have a, I have a yes, ma'am. So you're adding 15 minutes to end each day. So what is? Are you divvying that up between seven periods? The, the principals will do that. I believe at the middle school, those days are going to be put in five of the periods that were um, a little bit shorter than the other two periods, and that way we'll make sure we get them over the 140 clock hour. And then at the elementary and primary school level, they'll be put into instructional courses. They won't go into lunch. They won't go into recess. They'll use that for actual instruction. I Question. Anybody else? All right, Ms. Rimes, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 6-0.
Thank you. And uh, last item is a consideration of approval for the 2015-2016 calendar. And Dr. Parrish, if you'd like to address some of those issues. Yes. First, I'll start with just a reminder that we do work as a region because we all share New Horizons. So regionally, we will have the same length and the same winter break. So it will be another two-week winter break. We did get a lot of feedback um, that folks liked having that this year. So the region worked hard to create that considering we're boxed in because it's a very late Labor Day next year. It's the latest it can be, so we have the latest start that we can have, and then slowly that will move back a little bit. Um, we have um, included two inclement weather days again. We're able to do that um, without pushing out into another week in June. What we have done is recommended making a couple of the um, what were previously early dismissal days full days in the calendar. So that gets at um, Mrs. Rollins' questions about can we build some of this in ahead of time. So those days will become full days during the course of the instructional year. I will say we still have the opportunity to meet the state requirements that we may have to make that last Friday again a makeup day if we have to go there. Um, but at least by building in a couple of those, um, removing a few of those early dismissal days, I think that's going to help to give us some hours that we didn't have as we came through the winter this year. So we will identify on the calendar or at least two days that will be makeup days if the snow comes before those days or any other inclement weather that causes issues and that would be President's Day and Martin Luther King Day so those two would be identified on the calendars becoming makeup days if the weather happens we are it was unfortunate this year it all happened after um, President's Day so those I think are the major changes that we see um, moving into next year we are, note for the um, elementary and primary school, they're going to have two less early release days than the high school and middle school because they do need a little bit more of that time. Um, so that is also a difference from what we've seen in the past. So we hope we've been able to build a little bit more in this year in case we have another rough winter or potentially a rough fall. Um, but we'll certainly be prepared to make changes if we need to next year as well. So with that, I recommend approval of the um, 2015, I can't believe I'm saying this, 2015-2016 school calendar. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the 2015-16 calendar? So moved. And a second? Second. Any questions, comments there? I do have a question. On um, the draft calendar that was in the packet, what do the numbers on the bottom of each day mean? For example, you've got, oh, I'm sorry, month, quarter, year. Yeah, so we're, to we're actually using that to count up how many, if we've got the 180 days, and then counting the days in the quarter because we're trying to balance out. So each quarter, you know, we try to balance the four quarters so they're as even as possible. So I think those are what you're referring to to help us. So, okay. Yeah, those are school days. So they're not going to match a, a regular calendar because Saturday and Sunday aren't being counted in there or holidays. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right. Um, Ms. Reimers, could you call for a vote, please? Ms. Whitaker? Aye. Mr. Hux? Aye. <clears throat> Ms. Rollins? Aye. Ms. Sidner? Aye. Mr. Melton? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. And do we have any public comment tonight? No, sir, we do not. Okay. Um, I guess that brings us to Dr. Parrish, communications. Yes. Um, first, I'd like to <coughs> publicly thank Delegate Housel. Um, he did a lot of hard work for us in the General Assembly this um, session. We had a lot of conversation about asking his support, whether it was supporting bills um, that affected Coast and City Schools and school divisions across the state, or whether it were ones that we um, felt that needed to be opposed. And in every instant, Delegate Housel voted in the way that school system, school divisions, asked that he vote. So he really supported us all the way through um, that General Assembly. And it's just nice to see, and it's nice to know there's a, a listening ear in Richmond for us. So I, I wanted to make sure that I let everybody know what he had done for us this, this session. Um, as you all know, that in the work session, I will present the budget. And then I'll go to all four schools tomorrow afternoon um, for the for this exact same budget presentation to be given to all of our teachers. So they'll have all the information by the end of the day tomorrow. I do want to thank everybody for their patience during the inclement weather. Nobody wanted to get students into school more than me. Um, so I can only imagine how frustrated everybody else was at home. I do want to thank Mr. Pappas and his work crew because there were mornings 
that they were out very early when most other people definitely were not out yet working on those sidewalks and driveways so we could get kids in school or get staff in who did need to report on some of those days. So we really appreciate the work that they did. I also wanted to take um, a moment to show my appreciation for all of you as board members as well as Ms. Reimers as the clerk. Um, we had to cancel our meeting last month because of inclement weather and February, February was actually school board and school board clerk appreciation month. So I'm appreciating you a month late, but I really do want to thank you for the dedication you show, the time you put into um, meetings and discussions and attending events um, for us. Uh, you really do a lot on behalf of our students, and you have at your um, your seat some um, thank you artwork from students, I believe, at the elementary school. So just a small token of our appreciation for all that you all do. So those and my comments. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sophie, take it away. At the primary school this month, they celebrated their love of reading March 2nd to the 6th. Men from around Pocosin read to the students during Real Men Read Day. Students dressed like twins, dressed as what they want to be when they grow up, wore clo clothing with words, and decorated classroom doors with reading themes. The week ended with a parade and the entire school dressed as Cat in the Hat. At the elementary school on February 11th, they celebrated the second quarter recognition of the A and AB honor roll students along with the most improved and Bulls Don't Bully awards for each class. The United States Air Force Brass Ensemble visited on Friday, February 13th and provided great music for the students along with information about the brass instruments in the ensemble. On February 20th, the elementary school had the pleasure of also participating in Real Men Read Day, with many of Pocosin's finest gentlemen reading to each class at the school. They each had a Dr. Seuss book to read, so they all experienced the fun of pronouncing the wacky words that Dr. Seuss uses in all of his books. On March 12th, PES hosted Family Math Night. Many, student, many families attended and enjoyed the fun math activities like shoots and ladders, multiplication, and division games, and a <coughs> compute computation cakewalk that had everyone solving problems to win a prize. Fourth graders will be going on a field trip to Williamsburg this Friday, March 20th. At the middle school, the 27-week tests begin tomorrow. Check Edline for specific dates. The SCA is currently sponsoring a competition to raise money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society with pennies for patients. Freestyle pictures will be on March 24th and Celebrate the Arts Night will be held April 1st from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Visitors can enjoy the student art show, music, musical vignettes, and a musical show. At the high school, the 11th grade SOL writing test took place today and tomorrow, and the makeup dates are on March 19th and 20th. This past weekend, our students participated in the annual Sadie Hawkins dance, and we actually had someone from the Williamsburg Cotillion come in and teach line dances, which was a lot of fun. I saw some of the police officers in the corner getting into it as well. <laughs> and uh, we had a very successful student-faculty basketball game. The senior class won for the night, beating the faculty 17-13 to in the final game. The PHS After Prom Committee is working very hard right now, trying to raise money and get ready for the After Prom event at PHS. The prom this year is scheduled to take place at the Mariners Museum. Senior cap and gowns are going to be delivered in the coming weeks, and sophomores will begin to order their class rings. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Whitaker. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On Saturday, March 7th, I had the pleasure of attending the Pocosin Education Foundation fundraiser that was held at the Yacht Club. It's, uh, it's a wonderful event in which it's a Vegas night, and uh, they raise a lot of money. They have a silent auction. They have a, a, I don't know, out loud auction. I don't know what the word is for that. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. We had city council members there. We had a lot of school division employees there, and we had community members there. For those of you who may not know, the Pocosin Education Foundation is a group of volunteers, dedicated volunteers who do amazing work. The money they raise goes back into the schools. They help the teachers in the classroom and ultimately all the kids. And it's a wonderful organization. And on that night, they raised just over $28,000. So 
So congratulations to them. Thank you very much to them and all of our supporters. And we look forward to another great event next year, I hope. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hugs. Thank you, Dr. Carter. I'd like to recognize and thank the teachers and students for providing the beautiful artwork we have this month for, for school board and school board clerk appreciation month. Uh, thank you also for the city public works and all the efforts they put forth to help maintain the transportation for the schools as well as the custodial staff and everybody that went above and beyond to keep schools operating during the winter weather and thanks also to everybody at the elementary school who prevented any water damage to the school. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ms. Rollins. Thank you. I just want to say that it's my pleasure to serve on the school board. Um, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying it and the response to this is you're very welcome. <laughs> Ms. Sidney. Uh, I'd just like to uh, congratulate all the students we recognized earlier. Uh, pretty amazing feats and um, I hope those that are going on to national competitions, <coughs> I wish them the best of luck. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Milt. Uh, yeah, so a couple items. Uh, I can vividly re remember my mother convincing me I had to go to summer school between first and second grade because I need some math remediation and I got to do a little bit of artwork. I think she wanted me out of the house, perhaps, but uh, anyway, I, I know it is significant and I appreciate the fact that we're providing that service. I get to wear this tie once a year, so happy St. Patrick's Day from Bugs Bunny. That's it. Thank you, sir, and I can't blame your mother. <laughs> uh, Mr. Paps, again, kudos to you and your staff for, for taking care of uh, all that you take care of routinely, especially during the inclement weather. Um, and hats off to the custodians because I despise having to uh, clean my little foyer right there with just a few people coming in and out of that type weather. I can't imagine for uh, four schools and, and a couple of thousand kids, but um, thanks very much. And uh, to Dr. Parrish and her staff, as far as the decisions to delay, to cancel, I think they were spot on. Um, uh, we all know that, that there's a lot of effort that goes into making that decision. Um, we know that you do not take those decisions lightly, and I appreciate uh, all that y'all did, and, and again, hats off to the fine decisions you made. Thank you for delegate to de Delegate Helsel as well, and to all who contacted state legislators over the uh, past months um, trying to encourage them to support public education and to refund some of the, the cuts that they've made over the years. So thanks to all of you. Continue those efforts, please. And we'll move into any material for board review? Not this evening. Thank you. And with that, we will adjourn to our work session. Do you like to have my